Is this New York skyscraper cursed? Built by billionaire Harry Macklow, this is 432 Park Avenue, the building considered by many to be a cursed building due to so many problems it has. As one of the planet's most recognizable skyscrapers, 432 Park Avenue majestically pierces the New York skyline, offering unparalleled city views. However, it carries a reputation that's far from perfect, a complex and tangled story so problematic it has sent even its billionaire residents fleeing. So what's the real story behind 432 Park Avenue? Why are the residents of this ultra-luxury tower embroiled in lawsuits against its creators? And could it be that New York's most controversial skyscraper is, quite literally, crumbling under its own weight? Rising to nearly 426 meters, Manhattan's 432 Park Avenue represents the pinnacle of luxury real estate. To put its cost into perspective, the penthouse suite alone commanded a staggering $70 million. When you consider the median New York City house price is around $850,000, the sheer scale becomes clear. An average New Yorker would need to work for more than seven centuries just to afford that single penthouse apartment. 432 and its towering neighbors are the centerpieces of one of Manhattan's most exclusive neighborhoods, the aptly named Billionaire's Row. This area along Manhattan's 57th Street is a commercial zone flush with swanky high-rises with views over a corner of peace. Naturally, it became a prime location for aspirational developers seeking hefty profits and for their super-rich customers with money to spare. While much of Manhattan is strictly protected by planning controls, this particular stretch lies in a special zoning district, an area that encourages high density. Although a dream location for developers, the challenge is Midtown Manhattan's existing density. It's an extremely congested area. To maximize space and financial potential, builders had to, quite literally, aim for the sky. They exploited a clever loophole that allowed them to purchase the air rights from nearby buildings, meaning they could erect their towers to somewhat absurd heights. As one might imagine, this sparked a free-for-all race for tall towers, and thus Billionaire's Row, home of the notorious 432, was born. Now there seem to be two distinct opinions about 432, but either way, it captures your attention. Most towers feature setbacks, making them wider at the base and tapering as they rise. The Empire State Building is the classic example. What made this building unique was that its straight form was maintained from ground to top, a drastically different approach. The architect behind the design is Raphael Vignoli, known for his bold, convention-defying approach. He is the mind behind the Tokyo International Forum, the Walkie Talkie in London, and the Battersea Power Station Master Plan. His legacy endures. Like many architects, he drew inspiration from unexpected sources. According to Vignoli and the developer, Maclow, part of the inspiration for 432 came from a wastebasket designed in 1905 by Austrian designer Josef Hoffmann. The geometric parallel is unmistakable. But what makes 432 truly staggering are its dimensions. It's easy to become desensitized to the sheer scale of these buildings when we only hear the numbers. But to illustrate just how extreme 432 Park Avenue is, consider this. Its base is a perfect 28.5 meter square. Until 2020, it was the tallest residential building in the world, standing 425.5 meters tall with an incredible width to height ratio of 1 to 15. To support such a structure, the skyscraper was designed with two massive, ultra-strong concrete tubes, one inside the other. The 9 by 9 meter inner tube forms the building's reinforced concrete core, housing elevators and stairs. 
The outer tube serves as the building's frame, connected to the core by beams every 12 floors. This engineering, which eliminates the need for interior columns, makes perfect sense when catering to the mega-rich, as it frees up vast open living space. The penthouse, for instance, offers an impressive 8,255 square feet of room with a 360-degree view that transforms it from an apartment into a box seat for the spectacle of the city. A building this tall and slender inevitably faces a formidable opponent, the wind. Any structure with a width-to-height ratio of 1 to 5 is already considered sensitive to wind loads. 432s is three times that. Due to its small footprint compared to its extreme height, strong winds could cause it to sway. Initial tests revealed it would suffer from a phenomenon called vortex shedding, which causes vibrations, frustrating noise, motion sickness, and more seriously, potential structural damage. To mitigate this, five open mechanical floors were incorporated throughout the building's height to act as windbreaks, allowing air to pass through. This reduces pressure at the top and prevents dangerous wind gusts at street level. Even so, this was not deemed sufficient. The final solution was a tuned mass damper, TMD, at the top, essentially a giant pendulum. To fit the space, the 1,000-ton mechanism was split in two, operating as opposing pendulums within the structure. Of course, as soon as 432's doors opened, its engineering brilliance was overshadowed by the intense public debate over the building's impact on the skyline. It was launched in 2015 and marketed with audacious flair. Instead of a dull video showcasing bathtubs and chandeliers, the developer spent one million on an Emmy-nominated film crew. The resulting artistic film, starring high-wire artist Philippe Petit, barely showed the apartments but created an immense buzz in the New York market. The success was immediate. By 2014, half of the units had sold for a collective $1 billion. By 2015, that figure climbed to 90%. It was official. The super-rich had raced to secure their exclusive homes. 432 was celebrated as the pinnacle of luxury living, but that image was about to shatter. The legal complaint was blunt, describing the case as one of the worst examples of sponsor malfeasance in the history of New York City. It alleged that the building, promised as one of the finest in the city, was in fact delivered, riddled with over 2,500 identified construction and design defects. What they demanded was $125 million in compensation. The complaints included horrible noises and vibrations, elevators that broke down and trapped people for hours, and severe flooding. There were even reports that the trash chute sounded like a bomb going off. The developers, however, painted a very different picture, firing back at the lawsuit. They called the action ill-advised and the building a treasure. They argued that the building's sophisticated symphony of systems merely needed fine-tuning. They claimed they attempted to make improvements, but were denied access by the board, which they alleged was manufacturing an ever-growing list of demands. Not all residents supported the lawsuit, with Macklow describing it as a scorpion stinging its own back because it was damaging the value of their own properties. Four years later, that original lawsuit still drags on. In a crazy turn, it has taken so long that a new lawsuit was launched this year, again by the board. This time, the allegation is of deliberate and far-reaching fraud by the developers, seeking over $160 million in compensation. The new complaint claims the building's facade is plagued by thousands of severe cracks and deterioration, causing corrosion and flooding, and that the developers knew about the defects, fired consultants who warned them, and hid the problems from buyers. Given all this, you might wonder about the impact on sales. Well, while resale prices at 432 have reportedly taken a hit, people are still buying apartments there. The question is, 
Can we call the project a success? From a financial standpoint, without a shadow of a doubt, the projected total sellout was $3.1 billion, a massive return. Love it or loathe it, this is one of the most famous condominiums on the planet. It has faced scathing allegations and its legal battle is far from over. But it's not the first skyscraper in the city to face a lawsuit and it certainly won't be the last. Its place on the skyline is permanent. It is now part of a New York time capsule representing the era of super slender, pencil thin towers on Billionaire's Row. Just as other architectural styles defined their times, these towers reflect theirs. And it seems that particular era has now come to a close. Manhattan will always be synonymous with luxury and 432's stamp on the city is secured. It has faced more headlines than many of its peers and only time will tell when the turmoil will end. What we do know is that it stands out unapologetically in one of the world's most iconic skylines. Its boldness and controversy in the end are precisely what make it a quintessential New York story. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. It really helps me keep making more videos like this for you.